Okay, let's talk about Cornubacterium diphtheria. So here we are, we're looking at diphtheria. Uh, this is a gram-positive bacteria, a bacilli, non-spore-forming, non-motile, and the appearance is described as seeing Chinese letters. So let's think about the clinical case. A young immigrant girl comes to the doctor complaining of sore throat and difficulties in breathing and swallowing. Her voice is usually nasal and a large gray mucus film is noticed on the oropharynx. The patient also exhibits STT wave changes on uh, an EKG and a slight paralysis of her tongue. Her blood pressure is low, her lungs edematous, and her neurological examination shows cranial nerve problems. Her physical her, uh, physician uh, begins immediate treatment and orders a potassium telluride culture to confirm his worst suspicions. Okay, let's talk about the clinical presentation. So locally, pseudomembrane, airway obstruction, systemic myocarditis, and uh, polyneuritis. Pathobiology, so it enters the nasopharynx via respiratory droplets and creates a gray fib fibrinous exudate, pseudomembrane, uh, composed of bacteria, white blood cells, and necrotic mucosa, which may block the airways. Uh, this, and it secretes a diphtheria toxin, AB toxin, that ADP ribosylates EF-2 and prevents protein synthesis in all cells. Toxin effects, cardiac, arrhythmia, myocarditis, nervous, cranial and peripheral nerve palsy. So for the treatment, uh, prophylaxis, DTAP vaccine, diphtheria toxoid, with boosters and treatment antitoxin, penicillin or erythromycin for local colonization, DTAP booster. And here are some quick facts. One should uh, avoid trying to scrape the pseudomembrane because bleeding and toxin spread may result. DTAP vaccines are administered at 2, 4, 6, and 18 months, again before starting school and every 10 years thereafter. Diphtheria toxin is carried by a phage, bacteriophage, so only lysogenic organisms cause systemic disease.